What's going on friends? Many of you may have heard of the infamous Harley Wobble at one point or another, or even worse, experienced it yourself. Now, there's a lot of causes for this. There are some fixes out there on the aftermarket, but it really hasn't been traced down to one single thing because there's so many factors that can cause it, including even, it's been rumored to be, the rubber mounting system on the bikes themselves. While this is true, in a lot of cases, it's not really considered a manufacturing defect. It really just depends who you talk to and what news article you're reading. So guys, what got the Harley Wobble thing started? Well, this came around on the touring bikes from about 2009 and earlier roughly with their rubber mounting system. If the bikes were improperly loaded, overloaded, sometimes under certain conditions, you could actually get the back end of the bike walking around on you, and that's a very, very scary thing to have happen. And I know a lot of people have experienced that at one point or another. Or if you ride your Harley into a corner really hard and really hot, you might feel it kind of walk around on you, feel the chassis flex and feel the bike trying to move. That is indicative of where you could get into that wobble situation. Now, another thing that I always come across, a lot of people, a big complaint is bar shake. If you're going down the road and you just take your hands off the bars, it doesn't really matter what speed you're going. Well, usually about 30 mile an hour, the neighborhood speed, the bars will start to shake and they'll shake more and more violently as your speed changes and as you're coming down. And of course you grab the bars and you can stop it, but if you don't, if you let it go too far, it can definitely get out of control on you. So do you need to go out to the aftermarket and buy some expensive stabilizer kit for your bike? Not necessarily yet at this point, unless you've gone through all the different steps that you need to take to make sure you actually really do have some weird, obscure problem with your bike before you go spend the money on that stabilizer kit. Because buying a stabilizer kit, if you really do have an issue with the bike, you're not fixing the problem. You're just masking the problem. And it's only going to get worse to where it creates an even more dangerous situation that's being masked by the stabilizer kit because don't get me wrong those things do work very very well guys please don't forget if you enjoyed today's video please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already now guys i have said it a thousand times before if you're experiencing a wobble on your motorcycle the first thing you need to do is go over that bike from front to back every nut every bolt inspect everything if you're not confident in your skills take it to a shop that you trust because this is very important. This is, your, this is your life. This is your safety right there. If you have spoke wheels, you need to check those spokes. Spoke wheels actually require maintenance and you have to check all those spokes and make sure they're tight because if those spokes loosen up, your wheel basically gets out around and that can cause a very serious wobble. And once they start to loosen up, eventually they just go one by one by one and the next thing you know, you got a wobbly rear wheel or worse, a front wheel. Either way, it's extremely dangerous. That's something you need to stay on top of. One of the most basic things you can absolutely do, any rider can do, is check your tire pressure. For sure, keep your tire pressure up where it needs to be. That is probably the number one cause of any kind of wobble or bad handling in a Harley Davidson that I've ever seen is just low tire pressure and it's super easy to check. Now, as I mentioned, you definitely want to check the mounts, your motor mounts, your rubber mounts on your bike. Even on soft tails with the rigid mounts, they do have a rubber dampening. They do have a rubber damper on there. You want to check that too. Look for collapsing. Look for any kind of rips, tears, even if they're really hard or anything like that. Anything that looks suspect, go ahead and change it out. Now, aside from just your motor mounts, you also want to check out your swing arm bushings. Now, I know there are some aftermarket companies out there that make polyurethane bushings and motor mounts, but man, I tell you what, I know they last a long time. They're very rigid. They work great. The bike will handle great, but man, it's going to shake your teeth out even worse than it already does because you're taking out the dampening. Those polyurethane bushings are great. They're very rigid but they damn sure don't dampen like rubber. The bike will handle better, but you gotta give something up for something. Now, another thing you're gonna wanna check, especially out back, and this is very simple, make sure your belt is properly aligned. Get your rear wheel properly aligned. You can do this with a tape measure, you can do it with a coat hanger, or you can do it with a fancy little tool like I have right here, and a tape measure. Either way, works just fine. Just make sure that rear wheel 
is straight and running true in line with the front wheel. That'll definitely cause some wobble. Now this is probably the part that nobody is going to like. I know my dad doesn't like it because I'm using his bike as an example here and I'm also using my bike as an example because I don't like this either. You see tires on your bike. They have tread. They look good. They look perfectly fine. But upon a little bit closer inspection, the devil is in the details. So a tire that looks safe, looks good to ride on, may actually be a ticking time bomb. It can actually be dangerous. And in some cases, it can actually be the cause of your wobble. Now I'm gonna start with the front tire that I just replaced off my motorcycle. This tire still has tread on it. It is literally just above the wear bars. And technically it's right above the wear bar. I know you can't see it very well on the camera, so I'll throw a picture up here. It's right on the wear bar. It looked perfectly fine. But I noticed, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I was getting a little bit of head shake. I was taking my hands off the bars and the front end was wanting to wobble away from me. And I'm thinking, all right, gotta be that tire. So the first thing I did, put the bike up in the air, I checked my steering stem. I made sure my steering stem was adjusted within spec, those neck bearings went from the bike, from the front to the back, just to be safe, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Everything checks out. Now, the cheapskate in me says, this tire's fine, it's got tread, there's nothing wrong with it. But, upon closer inspection, what I noticed is, is I have high and low spots on each side of the tire. Now, what that is caused by is the crown of the road. And it, you should be riding on either to the left or the right of the crown of the road. And when you're doing that, this is putting your bike either one side or the other on that crown. That's where your tire is wearing. And of course, I ride on both sides, so I have kind of some wacky tire wear on here. Now, sure enough, I get this tire off, I mounted up a brand new tire, all my problems were solved. That simple. On something that looked perfectly fine, but it was causing me a dangerous situation. Now, let's take Pop's V-Rod, for example. This bike is a 2012, low mileage. The man's in his 70s, so he really doesn't ride a whole lot. He bought it used, and he's maybe put like 2,000 miles on this. It's a 2012 model. It has the original tires on it. Dad is complaining about the handling of the bike. And I've rode V-Rods, I know what they feel like. I get on this bike, I can immediately tell. These are the original tires. They are, for lack of a better term, they're pretty rock hard. They look good, don't get me wrong, but about seven years is what you're gonna get out of a set of tires. These tires are 10 years old. So I did notice on his back tire, he's got a line in it that looks like it's scribed all the way around. Now, without actually like x-raying the tire or something, I can't really give him a definitive answer, but from riding it, I don't like the way it feels. With that line in there, to me, that is kind of indicative of separation. And not only that, you can actually feel that line in that tire. So even though that tire has tread, it looks good. I know nobody wants to mess with that big, that big bad V-Rod tire on the back. It's not hard to change, it's just expensive to pay for. But it literally all comes down to what is your life worth? Is your life worth you know, seven, eight hundred dollars in a set of tires, or are you fine with running these old tires and risking it? Now, when it comes to stabilizers for these bikes, I don't recommend getting a stabilizer and putting it on your bike unless you have gone through every possible solution on these motorcycles. I'm talking you have good motor mounts, your wheel bearings are good, your spokes are tight, your neck bearings are in shape, you got good tires on the bike, everything's at proper air pressure, there is no other possible solution and you're still having some kind of wobble and walking issue with the bike. That is when I would recommend going out and actually putting one of these stabilizers on your Harley Davidson. Now don't get me wrong, these stabilizers are pretty expensive and it's kind of one of those things you're like, ah, well I shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, well, you know, maybe you ride a little harder or you do something, you maybe push your Harley a little bit harder or you have more gear on it. You're doing something that's upsetting the chassis. And I can tell you from experience, these stabilizers, I've ridden rubber mounted Dynas and some touring bikes with these on there. They really, they do not destroy the ride of the motorcycle. But when you really start getting into the curves, you can definitely tell that it makes the motorcycle more rigid. You don't feel that flex and that walk like you originally did when you're going into the corners. But anyhow guys, I really hope this kind of cleared things up on the stabilizers. I had a lot of questions out there like, why would I need that? I shouldn't have to put that on there. Well, technically you shouldn't, but in some rare cases, 
you just might have to just to accommodate your riding style whether you ride really heavy loaded down with gear or you just ride the bike really hard but anyhow guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I appreciate you sticking around to the end of the video. And since you're still here, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. But anyhow guys, let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on the stabilizers. But until next week guys, you stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge those cars, and I'll catch you guys back here next week with a brand new video. Thanks for watching.